So in this video, I want to tell you guys a story about uh, what went wrong the first time that I went out camping all by myself. Well, actually, it was uh, the whole family. So I had done a lot of research. I had looked into tents, making fires, mat air mattresses, thermal insulation, all of that. Finally, I had saw a video where somebody said, before you go out and do like a big trip, like, I don't know, in some state park or the Appalachian Mountains or something else like that, try a place that's closer to home. That way, if something goes wrong, it's easy to just hop in the car and go back. So we did that. We went to a car camping site. And one of the first mistakes I made is that I got there kind of too late in the day. When I got there, uh, the sun was basically going down. People already had their fires going. So after we got out the car and set everything up, it was pretty much dark. So the mistake that I made in hindsight is that um, I got there too late. And this is the first thing that I learned. If you don't have time to get to your site and have everything set up, I'd say probably by two hours before it gets dark, just bail. In this case, I was a little bit overconfident. I figured that it wouldn't take that long. We got there, the sun was going down, people were already setting up their fires, and we were basically trying to scound for firewood. Uh, this was a campsite where there was no outside wood allowed, so you basically had to just go forage for wood and make your own fire. Well, that was before I knew about different types of wood. We ended up getting this pine that was laying on the ground, and it was just a disaster. This stuff wouldn't burn, it was kind of damp, it was more smoke than anything. Uh, we had bought all these hot dogs and stuff like that. It was just ridiculous. So we did that till about nine o'clock or something, trying to keep this fire going. It wouldn't go in. And you'd be surprised how hard it is to keep a fire going. You, you know, you see on TV about all these four fires and stuff, but it actually requires skill. So the first mistake that we made was not knowing when to get to the campsite. Get to the campsite earlier, make sure you get your stuff set up well before it gets dark. Number two, make sure you know how to start and maintain a fire. Believe it or not, there's actually some kind of science around this. So you want to look into like um, TP, log cabin, just Google all this stuff, you'll find this out. Number three, where we messed up at is sleeping accommodations. So I had this air mattress, like, you know, an aero bed you get. Makes sense, right? Air mattress, I had a pump, you know, yeah, pump it up from the car, plug it up. Shouldn't be a problem. Well, one of the things that I realized when we did this, it was basically around Halloween. And uh, it was pretty much gotten to like the 50s overnight, mid 50s, I'm sorry, mid 40s, early 50s. So if you're laying on an uninsulated air mattress, essentially all the heat just conducts out of your body into the air. So essentially you just end up laying on a slab of cold air. So the short story is we froze our ass off that night. And that's when I had to learn the hard way that you've got to invest in a quality sleeping pad insulated. Even if you think it's gonna be warm, when you're laying and not moving, your body cools off a lot. You're not generating any heat. So you wanna make sure that you have something that's keeping the heat reflected back up to you and you're not laying on just cold air. Uh, a more expensive sleeping pad is gonna have a uh, R value. It's gonna be insulated so it'll keep you warm. So in wrapping up, three tips. Number one, get to your campsite early. Number two, make sure you know how to set and maintain a fire. Number three, make sure you get some type of sleeping pad insulated. Do not take a uh, pool air mattress or an aero bed or something else like that. You gotta get the right gear for the job. Let me know what your worst story is the first time you went camping. Thanks for watching.